Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network, SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and welcome to another episode of Believe SoCal Sweat. We are entering the second week of January, and if you've made resolutions, how are they going? Studies have shown that 12% of people actually succeed in their resolutions. And with a few funny quotes of people with experience, one guy says, well, duh, you won't break your resolutions if you don't make any. Well, that's smart enough. How about, you know, I can't believe it's been a whole year since I didn't become a better person. Again, another resolution fail. And how about number one is to get my finances in order. And number two is to get finances. And my New Year's resolution is to stop lying to myself about making lifestyle changes. And finally, I don't claim them New Year's resolutions. What I prefer to call them are casual promises to myself that I am under no legal obligation to fulfill. <laughs> Sound familiar? Whether we be on a weight loss regimen, a diet, any type of money, any type of maybe finding a great partner, leaving your partner, getting a new job, these can all be very daunting. And a lot of psychologists and dietitians simply say to let go of perfectionism. Just let go of it. If you're on a diet plan, do the anti-diet. Give yourself permission to do things and the more you give yourself some gray areas, the more you should actually succeed. This podcast episode is actually gonna focus on weight loss, diet, and fitness. And we need to be kinder to ourselves. Some dietitians and psychologists say to practice the 80-20 rule, meaning 80% of the time, do everything you can to stay on top of your regimen. Maybe you're on a keto diet. Maybe you're just cutting out carbs in general. Maybe you just wanna lower your sugar. 80% of the time, try as hard as you can to do the things that you've set your goals on in order to achieve what you want. And 20% of the time, let yourself have those great areas of enjoyment. If you wanna go out with friends and enjoy margaritas and nachos, do it. Football Sunday with the guys, with buffalo wings, or the girls, um, enjoy that, life is too short. And when you allow yourself, and I don't wanna say cheats, when you allow yourself areas where you can actually enjoy things, you may actually enjoy the food better and not act like you're depriving yourself. And therefore, having a much better success rate. We simply have to learn to be kinder to ourselves and avoid the perfectionism trap. Life is simply too short. But if you're really falling short of goals in life and it's actually affecting you psychologically and mentally, then there are certain things that you can do, but this episode will give you a bunch of tips to just give yourself that gray area and be kind to yourself and apply little tweaks in your diet and fitness regimen to make you feel spectacular in 2022 while actually enjoying your life. I've gathered a bunch of tips from dietitians and psychologists from magazines such as Prevention and also Women's Health, Shape, and The Today Show with master dietitians. A couple things that we can do to really avoid that trap of falling and self-sabotaging and feeling like we've done nothing. The first one would be escape perfectionism in using the words good or bad to describe you, your food, or your behavior. Instead, choose the words like healthy or unhealthy. The words good and bad convey judgment and can easily mean good me or bad me. We often reward ourselves when we've been good and punish ourselves when we've been bad. But some of us like to be punished regardless. These words promote the all or nothing pattern that you're trying to escape because that's perfectionism. No, no one's all the way good or all the way bad. So avoid the words good and bad. The second one would, would be to choose a healthy program that actually works for you. How does it fit into your lifestyle? Is it doable? Can you afford the groceries that it takes? If it involves a trainer and shakes and all of these other things, look at your budget. Is this realistic? Sometimes people will just start from zero and go to 60 while, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna run 10 miles when they haven't run at all. I mean, you have to pick and choose what's right for you. If you hate cutting out carbs, then don't do keto. There are a million diets or just 
If nothing else, just cut back on sugar and drink more water. There are little things you can do. So really avoid that you have to do one certain diet. But if you find one that really works, try to stick to the guidelines and follow that 80-20 rule, meaning 80% of the time do as much as you can to achieve what the guidelines are, and 20% of the time give yourself some leeway to enjoy other aspects of life with certain foods and other maybe other diets, things like that. The third one is to establish a range for your goals to allow for more flexibility in your life. What if your kid is homesick and you have to take off of work and you wanted to meet with your, your running group at 5 a.m.? Well, you can't do it this time. For instance, walking 30 minutes four to six times this week is a healthier goal than a goal of walking every single day because not, you can't do this every single day. So establish a range for your goals to allow this flexibility when life happens. The problem with an everyday goal is that when you miss it just once, you feel like you've failed to reach your weekly goal and you feel frustrated and some people just simply self-sabotage. Number four would be to build in food treats into your diet on a regular basis. Try something new every week. Maybe you wanted to try a Middle Eastern restaurant and you love anything with cumin or Japanese or, I mean, God forbid, the, the taco, the Mexican places, which are fabulous, or a dessert place. Try something and add those treats in so you have something to look forward to. The best way to keep cravings under control is to give yourself that permission and to have them on occasion without guilt as part of your program. When you know how many calories the food has, you'll be more comfortable with eating it since you know how it fits into your program without quote unquote ruining things or self-sabotaging yourself. The fifth one is to take a day off from exercise every week. Yes, you don't have to do seven times a day or seven times a week. Some people do two or three a days. I know a lot of people that do two a days at least. Um, a lot of my friends are doing the 75 hard. I love the 75 hard. I right now won't be able to do it, but I think I want to do it in the future for sure when my leg is better. So take a day off from exercise each week. And that's right, give yourself a day away from that exercise and use that time to focus on nurturing activity for yourself, like reading a book, doing a hobby that you love, or just playing with your kids or having a romantic night with your husband, or just getting on some dating website and having a grand old time, which a lot of my friends do also. <laughs> Um, number six is to avoid unrealistic goals for yourself when traveling or on vacation. I have gone on vacation with people or I've worked on, worked with people on big shoots where we've gone abroad and some people are so regimented and I think that's wonderful. I know that Mark Wahlberg is just a diehard. He, and so is The Rock, even when they travel and I think that's amazing, but sometimes you just can't do that or maybe you're in a country where it's just simply unsafe to go running outside at five in the morning when you don't know your surroundings. So avoid unrealistic goals for yourself when traveling or on vacation. And nothing zaps your program faster than trying to do the impossible and not being able to do it at all. Maybe you're on a cruise ship and they shut down the gym and then you just feel like, like crap and then you'll self-sabotage at the buffet. Hey, go enjoy that buffet and maybe walk some extra laps on the, on, the, on the Lido deck, you know. Make peace with the idea that it's a maintenance week or a weekend is okay to take a day off. A maintenance week is one where you can make mostly good choices but are not striving for the same goals as when you're in your regular routine. Again, that 80-20 rule, practice that. Number seven is to post reminders to yourself that it's okay, it's okay to not reach that perfectionism. Dare we say it's okay to be average? I hate that word, I hate that word, especially for people that are overachievers, but it lets you relax and enjoy your life. So you can place a note on your mirror in your car or your calendar to remind yourself to relax and let go of trying to be perfect. People that you look up to, maybe they be thin, maybe they are super muscular, maybe that you see them, them on Instagram and see them as perfection, they are not, nobody is perfect, nobody is perfect. The majority of them simply make healthy choices most of the time or are using master Instagram filters and I don't even recognize some of the people that I have met off Instagram, whether it be at a conference or a modeling job, it's just, it's, so don't believe everything you see. And um, Mel Robbins, one of my favorite motivational speakers says, give yourself a high five in the mirror at the end of the day. I know it sounds crazy, but I tried it the other day and it's like, you just kind of say, great job. I mean, we give high fives to each other, whether it be in sports or maybe for a corporate level or anything that you do. And that it kind of means win. That look at Olympians, they give each other high fives and now it's fist pumps or whatever during COVID, but it's, it's a reminder to yourself that you did really well. So do that for yourself and see what happens. 
Number eight is to be accountable to a professional or a friend or your, or your spouse, someone that's gonna keep you on track if you may not feel like being on track some days. The easiest way to reach your goals and stick with your program is to be accountable to a nutritionist, a personal trainer, a counselor, a coach, an organization. I know I have a friend who's a nurse and their whole nurse's ward on their floor is keeping each other, they're all keeping one another uh, accountable because they'd gained a lot of weight during the pandemic because they were working their booties off, you know, with, with stress and everything else that they were dealing with. So if they gain some weight, I mean, honestly, they should reward themselves with something that, that they can enjoy. And it's important to listen to their advice and give up thinking that you know better if you're talking to a professional. If your past weight loss efforts have proven otherwise. And also don't keep going back to that past. If you failed in the past, that doesn't mean you're going to keep failing in the future. Number nine would be to journal about your emotions. You won't be able to suppress your emotional self for very long, so give it a voice in your journal or speak freely. You'll find that you can learn to negotiate with your emotional self and its desire to sabotage your efforts if you listen to it and try to take control of it. I myself do not write in a journal, but sometimes I take audio notes and I just kind of like listen to them. I'm like, okay, a reminder. Yes, okay, think about that. Or I mean, even daily reminders. I'm like, remember to do this. Or if I feel like I'm not doing well in something, it's like, remember to stay on top of your goals with this. You've really, really been slacking, McDaniels. And number 10 is to have realistic weight loss ex expectations. Nothing will cause more frustration than thinking that you should be losing weight faster. Aim to lose up to 1% of your body weight week in and week out. But realize that plateaus are completely normal and part of the journey. Anybody that's seen The Biggest Loser or um, there's another show on TLC where it's a pers there are personal trainers that gain weight just to empathize with their clients and they get so frustrated when they're trying to lose the weight back and they can't and they realize, wow, even though I'm born with more you know, genetically blessed genes with a higher metabolism, now I realize what someone else goes through because you go through that, those plateaus. And remember that slow and steady wins the, the, the weight loss race or any race in general. Whether you're trying to make money for myself, it's healing my, my, my broken, you know, my shattered femur that's getting better every single day. But it's like, oh my God, when can I do a CrossFit? When can I do like an Ironman? I mean, I just, I'm going crazy in the fact that I still cannot run. And that is my biggest fear of like not being able to run, especially when you're in a safety compromise, which I've been in several times and cannot run away. It's very, very scary. But I know that slow and steady wins the race and patience pays off. But oh my God, I am like a Lamborghini and not a minivan. I just, I don't have the patience. I want to be in a high octane fuel with a nitrous tank in the back. And with practice and ironically allowances for imperfection, you can establish a new and healthier approach for yourself based on that 80-20 approach and rule. It's not as glitzy or as glamorous as the perfectionist all or nothing approach, but that really doesn't work for most people. It is based on solid behavioral science and will give you something that has been missing from your past, your past efforts, lasting results. So give yourself that time, that leeway, that patience, and follow that 80-20 rule. Are there any other things that are judging your mind? Try to let go of that fairy tale perfection, that Pollyanna viewpoint, and you can make time for what's real in the real world. How much more fun is it to actually grab a bag of fl flaming hot ch Cheetos if you're if you're craving that, or try different foods? Enjoy what you're eating. If you want to, if you're craving something salty, try something new and different. Add different things into your regimen and try things out because. Variety is the spice of life, as we know, and that applies to everything. And you should always try something once. Go to a different restaurant, enjoy it. And when you're on a fitness routine, don't do what you're, you know, someone says, oh, I do this and this works really well. If you don't enjoy it, you're not gonna keep it up. Maybe you love Zumba and people make fun of you, but you love it. Do what makes you happy. Sometimes people just wanna move in their apartments and have a dance party. That's fine, that means you're moving your body. There's a new program called the 305, which is all about Miami dancing. And you can do it in your home, it's easy and it's fun. But if you're a diehard and you love a treadmill, or you love to swim, or you love to hike, do what makes you happy. Maybe you love to just play basketball or play tennis with friends. You're only gonna stick with what is enjoyable. And again, you only live once and you should enjoy with your family and friends Keep practicing that 80-20 rule and you will be on your way, but avoid that perfectionism because 12% of people actually make their New Year's resolutions. So give yourself that leeway and maybe you can win and I know you can. So you guys have a wonderful week and I've stopped saying Happy New Year. I went to the gym today. I'm like, I went to a new gym and I'm like, oh, Happy New Year guys. And I'm like, 
And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. How many times have you heard that? And they all like burst into laughter. I'm like, oh God, I'm so annoying. But anyway, continue having a wonderful 2022 and let's just hope that things continually get better. Anyway, you're awesome. Have a great week and thank you again so much for joining me on another episode of Leave SoCal Sweat. Thank you. We appreciate you for listening and please rate and subscribe to the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary Tuned In, or at Leave.com. And you can always reach out to me for any questions or topics you'd like covered on the show at Ann McDaniels or at Ann McDaniels Actress. And I will see you next time on Believe So Cal Sweat.